Hey everyone, Cody Ross and Toys, I'm back here for another wonderful zombie video. Finally, we have the zombie binder video. A long time ago, many years before Call of Duty Black Ops 3 came out, I went and made a bunch of videos, commented on a bunch of forums, and asked all of these people and gathered thousands of responses and sat down with my best friend in all the world, Ryan, and we made this entire list of suggestions to Treyarch on how to improve their game. We compiled it into a binder, I did concept art, wrote an entire storyline out, and I left it wide open for Treyarch to do whatever they want, but these were suggestions for the community. And some of the stuff might have made it into the game itself. I never got the binder sent back to me, and it was sent to them years before the game was done with development. Without further ado, I'm going to take you through the entire binder. I don't have any of the artwork left, but I do have a video footage dating back to when I originally sent it to Treyarch, so I'll edit that in at some point. This is going to be a long journey discussing all the ideas I suggested and all of you did as well for what Treyarch could have done after Black Ops 2. To start, I made the binder and it said suggestions from the zombies community. It was a big binder. I didn't end up buying another one, but instead I did do little fun things like this in the corners. I ended up putting little logos in the corners and I watermarked each of the pages. So I'll show you more of those really interesting and cool things as we go on. I started with a letter to Treyarch because you gotta introduce yourself if you're gonna start making claims and assumptions to say, hey, you should do these things. Well, let's introduce ourselves. Dear Treyarch Zombie Team, I love your game and want to thank you for all that you have done up to this point. There are things I haven't been happy with and things I have loved in your games. I have made thousands of videos over the years and accumulated some great friends because of your game. I have met players from other countries who I am now close friends with. Your game was and is a part of my life. I don't expect the Treyarch zombie team to use my ideas and suggestions, but as a zombie fan who has talked to thousands of other fans, I want to share a collective of ideas with you even if there is the tiniest chance anything could be used in the game. The information inside this document has not been shared with anyone or any of my following in any way. I have not shared these ideas with anyone for the completely slim chance that the zombie team would like to use one or more of them. These are just ideas of two zombie enthusiasts who have played all of your games since the beginning and have talked with enough fans to understand the mode as a whole. Thank you for all your hard work, time, and sacrifice to make these games a reality. They have changed my life for the better and I cannot thank you enough. Sincerely, Read. After our page, we enter with ideas and a wish list for the next Zombies game. So I'm going to read you through all these pages. It might be long and laborious, but this is something you might find interesting to see what showed up in the zombie game. And none of this possibly could have been any influence to Treyarch at all. But some of this might have been. And it could have been your ideas from videos or forms that I ended up putting in here with my buddy that we sent off to Treyarch just to say, hey, this would be cool if it showed up. But what you'll see when I first tried recording this video, I really, really wrote a fanfic <laughs> of sorts for the zombie storyline. So I suggested how they should have moved forward. And guess what? No multiverse in my storyline. So <laughs> we'll see which one you like better. I'd, I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are and reaction to these suggestions in the comments down below. So let's get into the ideas in the wish list. The following is our suggestion for the storyline and possible maps for the next game and DLCs in the next zombie installment. There will be a grand summary at the top of each map and more details following. We want to give the zombies team our imagination but still give them full creative control to branch off our ideas to create amazing maps. If any of these ideas are appealing, please implement them into your next game. I hope you do give this timeline a chance because I think it is very well thought out and appeals to a lot of the marketing points of zombies. We try to keep it as true to the brand as possible. Next. A full summary of the maps and storyline. We wanted to hit them with a summary first to make sure they didn't have to waste their time reading through all of our suggestions if they weren't even on board from the beginning. This storyline fixes all that has happened after Moon, mends the rift of time, and stops the zombies once and for all in this timeline. The original crew of Dempsey, Takio, Nikolai, and Samantha, trapped inside Rick Tuffin's body, pick up just after Moon. The Fab Four find a way to kill Maxis and take him out of power in the first map after the events that took place in Buried. Maxis is trying to sacrifice the lives of everyone on Earth to reach Argotha. The events of the first map allow Richtofen back in control of the zombies. In the second map, players work together to undo Richtofen's grand scheme and save Samantha. Once Richtofen is back in his body and Samantha is safe in the MPD, 
only the voices are in control of zombies. The voices are the true evil controlling the zombies during all these maps. In the third map, the crew takes Richthofen to be cleansed to help him think clearly again as he did before he touched the MPD and began hearing the voices. When he is thinking straight, he remembers where to find information to stop the zombies once and for all. In the fourth map, the original crew travels to an old Russian facility to find this information. They work with the transit crew to unlock the secrets of the Ascension Group and locate the original machine that created the zombies. This map mends the rift in time created by Element 115 to save one timeline from zombies. The original crew travels through the Grand Zombie Facility in the final map to destroy the zombie making machine to end zombies once and for all. Next, what we did is at the top of each of the maps for the storyline, we put little symbols in the corners to represent what's going on on the map. And if you recognize that, you'll probably notice that's the Bermuda Triangle. So let's get into what was inside this map. The summary of the first map. This map is the closest place on Earth to the ether. This map is meant to take out Maxis from the equation and figure out how to undo all of Richtofen's damage to Earth. It takes place on a storm-cursed island in the Bermuda Triangle. The details. This map takes place after the buried ending where Maxis is in control. Maxis plans to destroy the world and our heroes intend to stop him. They have been stuck on the moon for all of Black Ops 2. The first map's quest, Easter Egg, is one that gets rid of Maxis entirely from this timeline. When he is destroyed, Richtofen returns to the ether and is in control of the zombies once again. Maxis is trying to sacrifice the human race for souls to get into Argatha and be reunited with Samantha. This is similar to the way the MPD was filled with souls for Richtofen on Moon. The mission of this Easter egg is to stop him from destroying everyone on Earth. The reward will be an artifact that will be used later in the next map to reverse Richtofen's grand scheme. Our heroes return to Earth through a teleporter on Moon. The world is getting hit with meteors from the endgame and buried. The atmosphere of the map is extremely chaotic. The crew teleports to a lost island, the Bermuda Triangle, where it is constantly storming. This area has the closest connection to the ether on the planet Earth. During the Easter egg, there is a battle between Samantha and Maxis because she wants to end the zombies. But Maxis is drunk with power. He believes he can now control everything and fix what happens to Samantha without giving up his godlike powers. Samantha was able to remember the connection of this island even after she was removed from the MPD and directed our characters to here. At the end of the Easter egg, Maxis shows remorse and tells the players what they need to do to remove Richtofen from the MPD and gives them an artifact to do it. Maxis leads our heroes on the path of redemption after they destroy him. The Easter egg on that map ends and all the players are granted a reward. As you can get the hint here with how we did this initially, is we want to give a general outline and not get too specific with what the artifact had to be, what the reward had to be for the map, and what the details were with the story. We just want to play with stuff that stayed true to zombies. I absolutely adored the idea of Samantha having being convinced by the other players what to do and then battling with her dad on this Bermuda Triangle map. I see these tornadoes spinning in the background, similar to Nuketown, but it's all this water and it's just an incredible atmosphere being built. And I'm going to get into more of that in a second, but I just am so excited by the thought of what they could have made in this map. Next section we have for everything is map layout suggestions. The Bermuda Triangle map should have lots of tents and canopies throughout. It is a makeshift shelter from the constant storm with one main wood building with two or three levels in it. There should be two choices to start where players spawn in on the beach and players can go through tents on the right or left sides. This will loop around the back of the map where players can now complete a circle or go into the building in the center that has multiple floors. The area in which the characters spawn is on a teleporter pad similar to the one in Area 51 on Moon. But instead there is just a tent over the top of the teleporter, very makeshift. There are stairs at the end of the beach that lead right into the start of the map. The next section here is about a special infected zombie. We wanted to introduce a special infected zombie to every map, or at least suggest one, because Treyarch continued to have that pattern throughout the maps in Black Ops 1 and 2. For the Bermuda Triangle map, we suggested a water zombie that is like a storm. When he gets close to players, the winds pick up and obstruct the screen, similar to the napalm zombie, but when the wind zombie gets close, he launches players across the map. And then we always 
always harped on the modes of transportation. That was one of the big things we get into later in the document, talking about what was not good for zombies, what really didn't work out, and transit was an excellent example of poor transportation, how long it took players to get around the map. For this, we suggested to have portals to get through this crazy ether-enriched area, and zip lines going from the main building all the way to the tents. Our next map. Oh, yes. Oh, you know what that means, don't you? Oh, I bet you're so excited, aren't you? The second map. The summary. The purpose of this map is to travel back and forth between time to stop Richtofen's grand scheme. This will return Samantha to power only to have the hero save her from the MPD. The goal is to destroy the MPD and find out what is truly controlling zombies, which is the voices Richtofen hears in his head. This map takes place above and below the Eiffel Tower. The tower itself is used as a magnifier for a weapon in the Easter egg to destroy the MPD on Moon. Beneath the Eiffel Tower is an old Nazi base from Group 935. Now there's some interesting parallels to what I had for my second map, which would have been the DLC map for Derise and Drock, what we actually got, and my suggestion was finding out who's actually in control of zombies, going back and forth between time like we saw with Groff, while well, we were going to have that kind of echo of what was going on, which I'll get into the details in a moment here. I just loved how I saw similar things in a blow up the NPD on Moon. We did that. But there were no consequences in our multiverse version, but in this, we actually had a linear story that could have gave it context. Which I love the idea now, like you'll understand what they could have done from DE that really would have blew our minds if we stayed with the same universe. But blowing up the moon once again kind of screwed us in the sense that like, well, we can't live on a world without a moon because the tides get crazy and then we'd reform the world and we're not going to really save anything. The details. The beginning of this Easter egg quest is similar to that of Shangri-La, but the characters are going back in time to stop Richtofen's grand scheme. In this facility, certain processes had to happen to allow Richtofen on Moon to succeed, originally. The Easter egg consists of the characters going back to the day the Moon event happened and stopping Richtofen's grand scheme. They continue to do steps that stop Richtofen, who keeps finding ways around the setbacks the original crew is creating. This continues until our characters are able to stop past Richtofen for good. When Richtofen fails his grand scheme, the first part of the Easter egg is over for this map. Samantha and Richtofen switch places. Samantha is back in power but gives the crews excessive drops because she wants to be freed. A permanent fire sale is also given to players as a gift from Samantha. The final step of the Easter egg is to free Samantha. There is a new energy wonder weapon introduced in this map that ends the Easter egg. The Eiffel Tower is used as a magnifying device to send the new Wonder Weapon's energy shot to the moon to destroy the MPD. This frees Samantha and destroys the MPD for good. During this Easter egg, the crew accidentally stumbles upon the secret to destroying the MPD. This is an unintentional result. The crew was trying to save Samantha, but destroyed the MPD in the process. Samantha has a Gersh-like ending and is now saved from the timeline. The voices are all that is left in control of zombies, and they are not happy that they just lost their puppets. The Eiffel Tower map destroys the bad future from ever happening. Happening. This changes the timeline and stops transit from happening, saving the Earth from Richtofen. The underground facility was created during World War II, but abandoned after the Nazis were defeated. Group 935 had no choice but to leave their research behind underneath the Eiffel Tower. The eye colors changed from Richtofen blue to Samantha yellow to finally the voices red. So what I loved about this suggestion to Treyarch was the idea of this map of going back and forth between time. So what the had to happen in this facility was Rick Toffin on Moon when he's typing in the computer and he's trying to log in with the password. Stuff was actually happening at this Eiffel Tower base. So you have the Eiffel Tower and beneath it are all these catacombs and all these research facilities, but you can still utilize the top of the Eiffel Tower and maybe even some layers on it. And the big secret here is that artifact we got from the Bermuda Triangle is used to amplify the Wonder Weapon laser that ends up hitting the MPD. A little much, but that's kind of where zombies comes from. My favorite idea was this dialogue and banter this setting could create between our characters. So we have our original crew now trying to figure out how to stop their past selves from completing Richtofen's grand scheme. And you can imagine the dialogue where Dempsey is logging on a computer and stopping something, and all of a sudden you can like hear Richtofen on the moon going like, How can you not recognize me? 
It's me! That's not supposed to happen when he's like trying to charge the Casimir plates and all of a sudden they're not working. And what's going on? And you could just hear the banter, the back and forth between Richtof going, what? What is happening? And then finding ways around it. And then our character's going like, oh my, how does he keep doing this? Uh, and it's almost like that Brock and Gary where Brock and Gary kept dying and our characters kept having to save them. But Richtof is figuring out a way around what our characters are trying to stop. It's just such a fun concept to me that you could really enjoy the banter and still make sense in the storyline. Once again, we had really cool places that the story was shaped around, not the story shaping these really cool places. The map layout suggestions. There's an elevator in the center of the Eiffel Tower that leads down to the underground labs. There's a series of levels to the underground rooms. Each lab is built into the ground and players see most of the walls is still dirt and rock. Monitors and computers are littered throughout the map as well as charred paperwork. The Nazis were burning all their research at the end of the war. The power room is right next to the Eiffel Tower on ground level. It would allow players to make the choice of trying to get more money and turn the power on first before taking the elevator to go down. With this suggestion, we were really trying to get a map where you could have a nice first room challenge. The power is right there within reach. Try and get as many points as possible turn on power and go downstairs. And really, then you can get everything that you need. We really like this idea of all these catacombs and structures underneath the Eiffel Tower because Trek could really play with what they put in these rooms. It could be a very complex system of caves and labs that would really be able to wow players with whatever historical research they want to put in or little hints and Easter eggs and scribbles they could put on the walls. The special infected for this map is a round with special zombies with hellhounds and jumping jacks attacking the players. If they can melee all zombies in this round, they're rewarded with a bottle drop and a max ammo. The reason we suggested Hellhounds and Jumping Jacks is because we want to merge the other games. There's continuity we want to create between these games that really would have excited players to see how it's reaching back and forth, how the rift is affecting stuff, and how timelines are getting messed up. And it would have been fun to have a simple reward that we were used to. The modes of transportation we suggested for this second map was a minecart ride across the labs to make it easier traveling between different layers and areas, and to have one or two cave slides to get from high ground to low ground to help speed travel up inside this map. The whole idea was a little Barry-esque where you have these slides that kick you off to different places. You have elevators taking you up and down. And then you also have a minecart ride that can zip you around. Oh, you know it. You know it was coming. If you've, if you've been with Rad Austin 27 for a while, you know what this map is going to be. Oh, you know it. Look, look at this shit eating grin on my face. Ah! Ah! What is that? You can already hear the eye rolling. Our third map that was suggested was... Atlantis. The purpose of this map is to cleanse Richtofen from the voices so our heroes can discover how to win. The objective takes our heroes to the legendary Atlantis for the cure. Group 935 and the Nazi party had great interests in the myths of the past. There is plenty of documentation of the searches the Nazis went through to find anything to give them advantage in world domination. This map was no myth and cultivated the most advanced society in history. However, this society could not overcome the evil of the voices. Once cleansed, Richtofen knows where to find the information our heroes seek to defeat zombies. That's the initial summary of the map, and it even gets to play into the whole idea of the Vrilia. This is where they came from, calling back to what Jimmy originally did with the Vril device and called the dead, and then Doris with the Vril device on the boards. It was bringing it all together in a really nice way. Our heroes go to Atlantis to find a legend that will purge the voices from Richtofen's mind. This map is far under the ocean and is pitch black without the blue flames which illuminate the city. In the end, there is a chair Richtofen has to sit on a massive altar. Similar to the Mob of the Dead sequence, but water runs over Richtofen, healing him and his mind in a ritual. When the voices are gone, Richtofen can think clearly now, but is still a little crazy. Silencing Richtofen's voices allows him to live again as the brilliant scientist he was. As soon as Richtofen is cleansed, the characters talk to him trying to find out how to stop the zombies. They ask him about the project to make the zombies and if they can be stopped. Richtofen remembers intercepting a letter in the past with his information. The letter contains teleporter coordinates that he didn't understand at the time. Maxis had stolen his teleporter ideas as he feared in the moon radios with Dr. Groff. Maxis used different calibration systems than Richtofen's teleporters. It wasn't until after Darius radios did Richtofen understand them. Richtofen remembering the coordinates, 
teleports to Maxis's private facility to try and find the information their team needs to defeat the zombies. The players are again rewarded at the end of the Easter egg. So this whole map's idea, going to the Atlantis, going to this mythical place, we're going to get into the build of it in just a second, the map layout, but the storyline objective is to get Richtoff and cleanse, get his mind clear, and once he is, he starts recounting certain elements and important ideas that our characters are pursuing from him. They're asking Richtofen, hey, how can we stop this? And this was never a goal of Richtofen. This was never his objective to stop the zombies. He was so consumed by his hatred for Maxis, for him stealing the MTD. This was a great way for the map to start tying in all these loose ends, as a lot of we've heard from Jason and the zombie team. This would have been such a great way to be like, oh, remember when this happened and that happened and I was so blinded, but now that I kind of came back to my senses, let's go to this facility and figure out how to stop what has happened. The map layout. The map would be made out of stone. The water levels are almost even with the ground level. Blue flames light up all the areas and pathways on the map once a player turns the power on. There is only dim lighting before the power is on. When players spawn, there would be a massive alien skull from Shangri-La in spawn. There's a bridge that leads into the mouth into another area of the map. It's like a giant skull out of Dead Ops Arcade, but it's the alien skull that we saw in Shangri-La, tying that together. The eyes light up when the power is on with blue flames. The Atlantean language is written on all areas of the walls, similar to the Origins language. They indicate different locations of the map. There's lots of overgrowth inside this map, which bleeds into the water of this abandoned city. So this idea I see is very much similar to the Disney Atlantis movie, where it was underneath water above them, they're almost like in a bubble. And you have all this almost Aztec stone all the way around, that nice sandstone that built this place. And the water is even, and you have this wonderful plant life that is thriving all around this area. You have a giant skull, which is the start of it, that you go, oh, now I get why we had the monkey skull and we had the giant alien skull in Shangri-La. We have blue flames that light everything up. We don't have Nazi research or power in that sense. We have a different kind of power through rituals or Atlantean myths, and you could really go with the mystic element of this map. That's why when he's getting cleansed in the ritual, when Richtofen's stuck in a chair and all the zombies start trying to rush you and the other three characters are protecting Richtofen during this sequence, you would see all these spells and mystic things clearing him from the voices while the voices are trying to kill you. The voices are angry they lost their puppets in the last map and now it's really starting to taunt you and the new announcer that is represented as the voices is trying to make you go crazy and is trying to really push you to your limits. Now by far this is my favorite suggestion for the special and Infected. There is a tall shaman type zombie. The eyes are burning with blue flames as he walks around the map. The same as the skull in the giant gateway as described earlier. When the powers turn on, this activates our shaman like zombie. When the zombie walks, there seems to be a blur effect going on and the zombie laughs manically to himself. When players get too close, it steals their weapons and teleports them across the map. Players will be able to retrieve their weapons by some means inside the game. So the idea with this shaman zombie was to have this crazy manic looking zombie that doesn't know what's quite going on and it's almost in and out of dimensions. It's playing with that whole idea of the multiverse that they were going with originally of just phasing in and out of dimensions with Mob of the Dead, but it was still one singular storyline. We didn't have all these branching effects. We were still with this one messed up storyline. Shaman zombie didn't really know where to fit because it's some kind of Atlantean artifact of what's been going on. And he comes over and takes players' weapons away from them, similar to the Pentagon Thief, getting that feature back in, and then whips them across the map in some way. Modes of transportation. There are slides in the tube system to get around the map. It's like the two at the bank when you send a check through the drive-thru. They use 250 points to get into the tubes and get around. The slides are located throughout the map. Many of the slides cross over each other so players can see themselves while they're sliding at the same time. With these ideas in the map, it would make it so much easier to get around. It's almost like a water slide world effect to really get around this Atlantis map. You have all these tubes that you shoot out from air pressure and slides that cross one another to really get players excited that you could be running around the map and slide down one way and another player's going the other way and zombies are chasing you and it just builds that kind of camaraderie and fun gameplay you desire in a map. As well as being able to go like this to get across this gigantic Atlantis map would be awesome where you just get a tube, zip, and then you're over there. Now our fourth map. Oh boy, what could it be? What was that? Was that a, a Soviet star? I actually cut that star out of the sub that shows up 
in Call of the Dead. In this map, players play as the transit crew, helping our characters in a different time to find the information they need to stop the zombies. They work together at the old Ascension Group facility to unlock the secrets of the past. This map mends the rift and sends our original heroes on their way to save the world while the transit crew sacrifices their lives to destroy the doomed timeline. The details. This map has our transit crew help the Fab Four get their information they need. This map is split in half. The original team is on the other side of this divider. Players play the transit crew and work with the original cast to complete the Easter egg. This is the end of the transit crew's run and they make the ultimate sacrifice in the Easter egg to give the Fab Four the information they need to defeat the zombies. By helping the original characters, they are destroying the errors within space and time that was created inside this game. This map should be more casual than the previous in regards to the atmosphere and mythology. The transit crew finds the old facilities of the Ascension Group and all the Russian technology from Project Mercury. This is the secret location as mentioned in the Intercepted Maxis letter mentioned in the previous map. This is a very close quarters map with lots of passages to get around. The map is layered like die rise. Therefore, players do not need to kill themselves on every jump. The transit character should be communicating to the Fab Four through the same devices that Max has talked to them before. All the original characters need is the locations of the zombie making device. The voices are also talking to everybody in the transit crew, trying to deceive them and talk them out of helping the Fab Four during the quest. This is almost like a dual Easter egg with the original crew. The teams will work together to finish the Easter egg. The players never see the original team, but hear them talking from the other side. The original crew is completing steps with the players to gain access to the final room, which has the information they need. The Easter egg room is filled with every map, including links and information, binding it all together. This is where the transit team will find the information on the zombie making device. They see pictures of the original zombie artifact before group 935 made it into the zombie making device. The location for the final map with the device is coded. The transit characters decode the message and, and deliver it to the original characters who get a reward and tease the transit crew for not getting one. But the transit crew does receive a reward just afterwards. What I loved about the creation of this map was the inception of the idea of bringing the transit crew back and making them relevant. So many times did we find that people didn't like the transit crew and the comics are almost doing that today in 2016. Well, it's about to be 2017. But back then, people really did not like them. And I found this would be a perfect way to lighten up the mood before the final map and connect with this old crew. We have this Ascension Group facility that has this locked away Easter egg room, which is this rift room pretty much that mends all the maps together. When our characters enter it, the transit crew sees all these connections, all the different maps, the Mob of the Dead, the Origins. You have all these things going on, and then they see where it started and then they have to start decoding it while zombies are attacking them and whatnot. I love the atmosphere, once again, of going back and forth with their characters. When it's only them and they're not really working off themselves, I love the idea that we're doing a step and then all of a sudden they're doing a step on the other side, the OG crew, who we played with for the past three maps. So it's almost like the idea that we would throw a ball over to one side and then they throw the ball back. Obviously, there's nothing on that side of the wall that's dividing the map, but that teamwork you would get, like from Call of the Dead, where you're working back and forth to do stuff, would really be exciting. Where Call of the Dead, they kind of just sat there. Here, we'd be going with our original crew, doing some kind of Easter egg. I also like that idea of teasing our players, not getting a reward at first, where the other crew from the other side of the wall is just like, yeah, we got a reward! And then they teleport out, and then our characters get our reward, and they make their sacrifice. And the big deal with the sacrifice is by them doing what they did, they're ceasing their existence. So they are still remnants from the broken timeline from earlier. So the Bermuda Triangle timeline, we only had two diverging timelines the way I made this, where you had the Maxis and the Richthofen and all that stuff get messed up, but we go and stop the Maxis ending. And then because we stopped the Maxis ending, the Richthofen one gets locked in. And because we stopped the Richthofen one, we have Sam and we save Sam. And all of a sudden we're fixing this universe. We're getting all, rid of all the 115 bleeding and all that's going away as time goes on. But our characters are locked in this from transit. This is one of the endings where maybe they didn't listen to Maxis or Richtofen, and our characters are able to connect with them at this facility. An, an old Maxis facility that was utilized by the Ascension Group that was secret from Richtofen because of his research being stolen for the MTD. It just, again, the lore, the science, it 
fit. It really fit better than some of the direction we went with. The special infected idea for zombies in this map was an advanced monkey from Ascension. They steal perks and lock down items around the map. So similar to how Brutus could lock down things, we'd have these monkeys going around the map either putting walls back up so you have to rebuy entrances similar to what we got in the spiders in Sensible Noshima or stealing perks like we, they did in the previous game. The modes for transportation inside this map would be air geysers that push players up and down different levels and zip lines to get across the map. This was supposed to be layered, so you'd have all this debris, very similar to almost like a Stalingrad, where we had that almost Rattenkrieg, where everything's rubble and destroyed and broken. Well, that's kind of like this map. It's really this place in between dimensions, in between timelines, that's broken. But it's not this space atmosphere that's crazy going on. It's still, here. It's still on a planet. It's still on Earth in a timeline. And we're going through this really rubble-filled place, jumping from place to place. But there's a lot of lifts. It's not this big, giant, die rise type map. We had a Wonder Weapon suggestion for this map. The Wonder Weapon for this map would be a gun that shoots a Gersh device like bullets that destroys all the zombies. The zombies are then sucked into a black orb that causes the zombies to flip around until it disappears, killing the zombies. Which is the Mars Agua. Literally, we suggested what they did with the Mars Agua, except we wanted a little more animation. They just kind of got with them going inside, but that's crazy to me that one of our suggestions like that was almost like spot on to a gun we ended up seeing. But then again, there's only so many ideas they can come up with. And the final map in our storyline, oh, thank goodness, reads almost onto the other stuff, is this. Oh, is that the Black Sun symbol? You bet it is. So, we went with a very interesting end to zombies, and I think you guys are going to love my suggestion of how we should have ended it. This is the final map in the greatest zombie facility. This holds the alien artifact that Group 935 experimented on to create the zombies. Our heroes are here to destroy the device and save the world. They combat all the zombies from the previous maps to destroy the voices in control once and for all. This is the grand finale of Zombies. Our players will have all the Wonder Weapons to aid them in this final quest and their storyline. If the players complete it, the previous Easter egg quest, there is an end game option where our original characters survive the map and save the world. Otherwise, they will give their lives to end the zombie crisis. The details. The final map starts off in a room with the zombie making device, but the players get knocked backwards out of the room. The players fly back and watch all the doors close as the players are pushed back through them. The zombie making machine is an alien device which 935 tried to control. They learn to create the zombies with it by building around the alien artifact with their technology. The easter egg for this map should work through destroying the alien device and also have all the other maps contributing a little something to the easter egg quest. By this I mean during the easter egg we may see buttons from Ascension or reels from Kino Deer Toten, tiny little things that make cameos inside this final map. The end game for this last map is triggered by completing all previous maps easter eggs. The end of the easter egg quest has our heroes facing every type of zombie in a last stand situation around the zombie creating device. The zombies are trying to stop our heroes from destroying the device. There is a five minute countdown on a massive screen in the zombie machine room on the second level. The normal ending is the characters die during this last minute of the standoff. Their sacrifice allows the zombie machine to be destroyed. The alternate ending, the last two minutes of the last stand, a button will appear and ask, save us all. When clicked, it gives all the players wonder weapons with unlimited ammo, as well as all the walls in the area flip to reveal lockers holding wonder weapons on the walls. That allows the heroes to survive with ease and save the world. Without all the previous Easter eggs, the characters die and the world is still saved. A great reward for the Easter egg endgame is to have the walls stay flipped with all the wonder weapons accessible for all future games. The zombies from every previous map are still in this map, so it becomes difficult as rounds go on. During the end of the quest Easter egg, all forms of zombies rush players to kill them. Each round has a specific map type of zombies. Players might have to face Kino de Torton zombies one round, then Ascension zombies another, and then Transit another. It is meant to be challenging, but not difficult when players are not completing the Easter egg. The map still runs smoothly, especially from the traveling standpoint. There are slides, zip lines, teleporters, geysers, flipping pads, 
all around the map to help players get around quickly. Most of the map is all about experimental testing and laboratories. Outside should have bits and pieces of all previous maps. It is one big zombie map collection. There is a new Pack-A-Punch machine for the final map called Pack-A-Punch Fury. That Pack-A-Punches, Pack-A-Punch weapons, or Pack-A-Punch fusion weapons. This creates the newest and strongest version of the Wonder Waffa. This machine looks like Pack-A-Punch, but is cracked and exploding with power. Light travels outside it and has some gas steaming out of the cracks, as well as a mystery box light shines up from it. The song is super loud and distorted from our original Pack-A-Punch song. The camel on the weapons is now a cracked version of the last one with super pulsing colors and overflowing with power. This map is just an explosion of happiness for me. The whole layout of the map has all these like crash pyramids in one section, the keen order totem broken up, and there's all these little areas that all connect our map. It's just all these cameos and celebration of what Zombies is. There's one section in particular that I get into the layouts, but it's this giant waterfall similar to Kingdom Hearts 2 where you would fight the final mix, where you would choose to fight all the previous Organization 13 bosses. Well, instead of having all these graves, all the perk machines are there. So you unlock that area and you can walk up and you can just buy any of every perk that's ever been in Zombies is inside this map. Pack-a-Bunch Fury was just my baby. I absolutely love that idea of a super Pack-a-Bunch weapon for very high rounds, but the machine is distorted from the Pack-a-Bunch song, and it, you see all this air shooting out of it, and it's super experimental way to upgrade weapons that we can only find at this facility. And when you get the weapons, when you like reload and knock out mags, fire shooting out of certain bits of it, and whenever there's cracks, the air is compressing out, and it's glowing with 115, just this really over the top exciting version of this end game to zombies. The story itself got me so excited from that Halo Reach aspect where our heroes are in a big sacrifice at the end of this. That they're giving it their very all to say this is it. We're going to break this machine. In the layout I'll get into the idea that the zombie making device and that alien artifact that crash landed and then group 935 started testing on it putting technology around it was actually in the shape of that atom in the hand. So like when you look up from the top of, if you were looked from the top view of that zombie making room where all the lockers are against the walls, you would actually see that they built that 935 logo around the device. So all of a sudden you get this clicking in your head like, their logo is because that's what the zombie making machine was. Oh my god, that's so cool. Like, it's those little details that I thought would really bring out this map. So you would have two levels to it where you have all these lockers up top and the lockers on the bottom. And you could stand on top of the zombie making device. And that's where the teleporter is initially when you come in. Then get pushed back through all those doors. I've always loved that idea that spawning in a map where you want to be and then getting pushed back out of all these places and seeing all the doors close on you and everything you have to buy and having the announcer being like, get out. And the end game was just something that I, I adored. This idea that a button would just rise out of the ground during those last two minutes. You complete all the Easter eggs and you're getting overwhelmed. You have George Romero zombies rushing you, Panzers rushing you, Napalm, Shriekers, normal zombies. They're all coming after you and you have what weapons to defend yourself? Nothing. It's multiple versions, many Georges. This is all these different dimensions and rifts all coming together, just ruining zombies. What you have in game isn't enough, but when you hit the button, you, you get the real Wonder Weapons. Like, Rick Toffin would get the Thunder Gun, Dempsey gets the Wonder Wolf, or whatever. You know, specific to each character, and then if you don't like those, on the walls, it unlocks all those weapons. And then for future games, those will be unlocked. So you'd still have to buy your way to the zombie making room, but then you would still be able to pick whatever Wonder Weapon you wanted off the wall and use that in a future game. Because I know a lot of people always say, like, well, when you complete the Easter egg, is it that way for all future games? Do you have permanent fire sale or whatever? It's like, no, it's a one-time deal. This would be such a great way to end the zombie storyline with a, a reward of that proportion. So here we go, the map layout suggestions. This is a massive zombie factory, but there are also outside areas to the map. The map should be in eclipse mode the entire time. For this map, there are three outside areas with slides connecting to the center room where the alien zombie making machine is. AZM, we will call it. 
The center of the AZM has a shining light to the sky which creates the zombies. Surrounding the AZM is metal framing that creates a circle around it which is the Group 935 logo stamped in the middle. There are two levels in this area. The top has a pack-a-bunch on it and there are stairs that connect the AZM to the second floor. They are in the shape of zigzags. If players look at the AZM from the top view, it is the Black Sun logo with the 935 symbol in the middle. The bottom floor is an open area with plenty of computers around the AZM. It's a very good training spot. There's also an elevator to get back up to the Pack-a-Punch or you could use the stairs in those zigzag formations. It just takes longer. It is surrounded by many different machines monitoring the AZM. There's a giant screen on the second level monitoring the health of the AZM. As players complete the Easter egg, they will see the screen's power and percent decrease. Over time, a recorded announcer like in Doris will tell players power levels are low, critical, and at failure. When you spawn, players are on the teleporter in front of the AZM, but the voices scream get out and your character push back through the start. Doors to the other areas close in front of players as they fly back. Before the last door closes, players hear the Pack-a-Punch door close. This map is a mix of all previous zombie maps on top of a great zombie factory. There is an area where all the perk colas lined up in a circle for players to walk into like an altar to get all their perks. Throughout the map, there should be items and landmarks from all the previous maps. The special infected zombie for this map, I loved it, and this is what it was, a cosmic silver background, where four or five of them charge our players, heavy weapons take them out, with some trouble, but nothing like a George Romero zombie. The modes of transportation are slides, zip lines, teleporters, geysers, flipping pads, all around the map, and they get players around as quickly as possible. So that was my suggestion for the zombie storyline. Jason, if you did read all of that, I apologize for the version I sent you, because the only one I still had on hand was clearly not proofread. So some of the stuff I was reading in here was like, ah, oh, jeez. And this is also written God knows how many years ago, four or five years ago at this point, because it was a year and a half before Black Ops 3 came out, so it was still really into production. Boy, I like, I, I know I, I, I've grown as a writer, but geez, that, that was pretty, whew. So now we're gonna get into the last bits. We're almost through it, I know. We're almost an hour into this video. I can't imagine what the hell this is gonna be like to edit, but we had so much we sent them. So that was just the storyline getting into it. This might go a little quicker. So we're gonna get into the innovation and ideas. We had all these new things to suggest to Triarch and see how they could take it and maybe run with it. So here are some new Perca-Colas. A perker cola that gives players more perk slots. Players keep buying the perk to get more perk slots. A little number will appear on top of the right hand corner of the perk indicating how many extra perks a player can buy. We started getting that off like the scavenger idea or the vulture raid and then we little numbers in the top hand right corner of the perk was really a good way that we could just keep buying this perk machine that would give you more perk slots. We ended up getting that inside Gobblegums where we ended up having the unquenchable each Gobblegum was pretty much what this perk cola was that we suggest. Next was a water perk cola where players dolphin dive and slide. Players can slide through hordes of zombies. Players can kill zombies for a certain number of rounds, but eventually it only knocks them over. This would end up becoming Slaughter Slide or Banana Cola. I, I mean, this was crazy when I started hearing all these suggestions, just like, dude, we talked about that years ago. And then they actually implemented it. It's just like, it, it's, it's amazing to me. Not that we caused the implementation, but just like the ideas made it through. A Perker Cola where the last bullet in the clip shoots out a zap gun shot. So almost like an upgraded cherry of sorts. A gravity Perca-Cola to jump higher and dive farther for players. This could help to get to new areas in the map. So this would be almost like a gimmicky perk for a certain map to get into certain places. Kind of like the Ascension map for the transit characters where they could be jumping around to different places to get to these rooms. A Perca-Cola to allow players to know the number of zombies left on the map. That's a feature most people complain about that I would be really happy to have in our Call of Duty Zombies. A Perca-Cola could remedy that. A deep penetration sniper Sniper Rifle Perca-Cola. It increases the penetration through zombies with sniper rifles. Pack-a-punching the sniper rifles makes this perk more effective. This was just a general stopping power type idea. We didn't want to give it to all weapons because they would be too powerful. So we said this is just for snipers. It's a way to bring snipers to a higher tier inside this game where LMGs kind of dominate. A zombie charge perk where players can run through zombies for a sprint. Zombies respawn or just drop to the ground and get back up. This is 
similar to the Fast Feet in Dead Ops Arcade where you would just sprint through all the zombies and knock them over. We didn't want to have this be a thing where you could continue to do this and abuse the system, but you can sneak through sometimes and then there's a cooldown. And you can't hit it every time, or maybe there's a certain number of times per round you could use it, but it's a really cool concept that we could burst through the zombies because it was already introduced in Dead Ops Arcade, and it's cool to see those other things tied back into the main game. Next, we suggested Pro Perca Colas. Pro Perks should be upgradable in a quick and easy fashion through points. We didn't want you to go on a quest to upgrade these things. We want you just to be able to buy them at higher rounds. Perks shouldn't be something that we'd have to jump through hoops for. We kind of work on to something here because Black Ops 3, we found a lot of these quests to upgrade stuff was just tedious. It comes to a point where just like, let's just play the game. So we'll run through the suggestions for these perk upgrades. Juggernaut Pro increases the damage for melee weapons. Speed Color Pro makes switching weapons faster, opening doors and climbing. Double Tap Pro has deeper bullet penetration or full bullets per one bullet, really getting a lot of bang for your buck in your ammo. Quick Revive Pro has quicker revive time and increases the reviving range. We ended up seeing this in a gobble gum. Stamina Pro run even longer and recover even faster from sprint. PhD Pro jumping from high ground to low ground will explode and explosive weapons do double damage. So we don't have to do a dolphin dive, we can simply just jump and that will do explosive damage. And we have double explosive damage to kind of get all the rocket launchers involved again. Like how many times do we use the XM or the Law or the Panzer Shrek and it's not fun anymore after a couple rounds because zombies get too strong and they just shake off missiles. Deadshot Pro, zombies heads glow and players shoot tracer rounds to see headshots. This was a cool concept to us that we would try and make Deadshot even better than it was. It, a lot of people skip over Deadshot, but we'd actually get this little type of glow where it's not obnoxious or intrusive. But we get tracer rounds to see where our bullets are actually going and help improve accuracy. Because in zombies, who cares if you have tracer bullets? And a lot of people probably think that's just cool to have tracer bullets. Who's Who Pro? Players spawn as a ghost with Mustang and Sally and grants players a little more time to get to their body and revive themselves. Electric Cherry Pro. Larger shock radius and wave gun shot with zombies super close. So when they would reload and shoot at the last second in their clip, you'd actually get one of those toasty wave gun shots. It was just a concept. Vulture Aid Pro would have more drops and weapons get extended mags. Now for drops. The suggested drops we have is a 30 second drop where everything is cheaper, like doors, wall weapons, percocolas, but the box is only cut in half. It's not a fire sick. A drop where players can keep firing for 30 seconds without needing to reload. Unlimited ammo drop. A drop where players are granted a key that opens a door for free. It's just one of those freebies. Really cool concept there. A drop that makes players invincible for a short duration of time. Something where you can just have fun or if you're about to get in a bad situation and you get lucky where you kill that zombie and you just run into a drop but you're surrounded, then all of a sudden you can get out in like five or 10 seconds. New Wonder Weapon suggestions. An energy gun that cunts horizontal in front of and behind players. This is the limbo gun before the limbo gun. My buddy Ryan came up with this theory. He loved this idea. And when it showed up in Exo Zombies, he was so mad. So this was before Exo Zombies when we sent this binder out and he was going like oh duh, I just, this was my idea and I'm like ah oh well Ryan maybe the guy that got this binder ended up going over to Sledgehammer Games for Exo Zombies or something like that that'd be pretty funny but I doubt it a gravitational wonder weapon that shoots small black dots that sucks zombies in and then explodes similar to the Gersh device but not as big a show again that is the Mars Agua like that is the definition of the Mars Agua but we had it as a gun not some creepy squid butt thing I mean who thought that was a good idea next we have Pack-a-Punch Fusion for all guns normal weapons can be combined with normal weapons to create a more powerful weapon Pack-a-Punch weapons can also be combined with Pack-a-Punch weapons to create super powerful weapons what this did is created a tier system to really change the arsenal from 20 weapons to 40 weapons or 80 weapons and you start getting all these different variants now. I know it would have been time consuming to combine models and stuff like that, but you still have the sounds, you have certain things you could combine. I just think a Pack-a-Punch fusion is long overdue inside Call of Duty Zombies. If a normal weapon did one damage, a Pack-a-Punch weapon would then do five damage in comparison to that normal weapon. A fusion weapon would be a 10 to one ratio. A Pack-a-Punch Fury weapon would be a 15 to 1 damage ratio for a simple comparison. When changing mags or pulling back the chamber, flames come out of the gun. 
The weapons have crack designs with box lights shining out of the cracks. The color scheme is green and blue neon glow, similar to the multiplayer camos released in Black Ops 2, but the two colors are flowing throughout the gun. Another machine we suggested was a machine that gives players special rounds. For example, fire, ice, electricity, or wind bullets upgrades for guns. It could be an elemental upgrade machine. Kind of sounds like our double pack-a-punch from Black Ops 3. A machine that gives players the choice to buy new attachments for their weapons. It could almost be like a true vending machine where the players need to pick from four to five pictures on the machine of attachments. They look what they want and they press that. A slot opens and the players insert their weapons. A couple seconds later, the gun spits out their new gun with its attachment. I thought that was a cool idea for a machine, but the weapon kits just make that completely irrelevant now. You can just customize whatever you want. But I like the idea of being in-game and you had almost like a drink machine how you could press like a coke or a pepsi or whatever where you could have the attachments and you could just push one of those put your gun in and get that out it would be something to do like in game changing your attachments and the final machine we suggested was a machine that would swap players perks out for them without downing themselves this could be a bottle return machine players can trade their current perks in for the same amount of points they bought it now players free up a perk slot to buy a new one this is something that is just long overdue and has not Im been implemented in any way. You buy a couple perks and now you want to change your perks. Well, it's literally a bottle return machine. I love that idea that we all have these perk bottles and then you can have a recycling machine where you return your perk bottles and you can get rid of that mule kick you don't want. You need speed cola or you don't want speed anymore. You need widow's wine. Like that would have been such a better way to handle the system in the future. So I hope to God that gets into the zombie game at some point besides just downing yourself and restarting your perks. Now the suggested equipment we had was a shield generator in the shape of a disc. Players get it out of the box. When a player is about to die, the shield shoots out a force field that blows zombies back and stops the player from being downed. A max ammo will refill this equipment. The idea here is almost like Borderlands 2 where they'd have those Nova shields. So when you're about to go down, it would go out and blast all the zombies back, almost like a burned out gobble gum. And then it would only refill on max ammo. It wouldn't be a round thing. So you wouldn't get a freebie once per round. But when you get your max ammo, you would have that one bit of safety. And that pretty much is like the shield equivalent. Now we're on to the almost last section here, which is majority of the community's ideas and innovations. These were general suggestions that we've heard from all of you guys on forums and theories and ideas and comments of what Treyarch should do with zombies. So I compiled them into suggestions and we're gonna go down the list. Mix up the zombie behavior. A way to make the game more challenging for players. The community loved the Ascension zombies behavior when they would roll out of the way when a player pulled them up in their sights. Making zombies change their behaviors is a great fun way to increase the game's difficulty in very incremental ways. Interaction. Buying items off the walls and boxes should have much more forgiving range. Many players complained about how close they had to be to buy items in Black Ops 2 compared to prior games. Anything that helps speed up the gameplay is a big bonus for the majority of players. Map Atmosphere Many players want mysterious, dark, and scary maps. In the past, maps gave the players less specific information, allowing for an ominous ambience with still enough clues to put together the hell and horrors of what happened in the map. This was made famous in the first four maps. In the first two zombie games, little was said besides radios, which fans adored. In Black Ops 2, the cutscene gave us a lot of information, but was presented in a way that didn't make sense to the most hardcore zombie fans. It was good that we needed to figure it out, but made many upset with the delivery of this information. There was a huge lack of radios inside Black Ops 2. In the first two games, there were combined 49 radios and messages. In Black Ops 2, there was 22 counting all the TV messages. There seemed to be a major difference in the content and quality of the radio messages in Black Ops 2. Origins was a step in the right direction. The radios were great and an innovative way to tell the story without a cutscene. Oh, I do not think radios hinder the story, but they help. The small clues in maps make it for the fans. They love to see the blood stains of the tiniest Easter eggs, some past examples of the knocking and keying of your toe in to the textures that fill the horror of the map. Buildables. Buildables were not received well by a majority of the community because they were time consuming and didn't have a great reward. The quicker and more effective the buildables were, the more they were used. Buried was a step in the right direction, but transit was horrible for this. 
The longer it takes to gather parts, the less fun the game is, especially if there's so much fog players can't see. The effect many were hoping for was the Area 51 fog after Big Bang Theory on Moon. Hindering the player's vision or changing it can be effective when it isn't excessive or during long durations of running while fighting off denizens. The more practical the use, the more likely it will be used in the game. A great portion of players would like to see Buildables gone completely within the next installment. The positive comments from Buildables come from Origins. The staffs, the shield, the Maxis drone were great. They were in close locations that were quick to pick up and make. The ability to have more than one Buildable also helped make the time quicker to build. The staffs were the best Buildable and they were a little time consuming to get all the parts. I love hearing rereading this feedback because this was something where we wanted to throw out Buildables but the shield was really the best thing that came out of buildables and the staffs and we kind of stuck with that the wonder weapons were buildables and the shields were buildables in black ops 3 so Treyarch really saw through what fans did and didn't like and went with that storyline grievance one major complaint from players is the introduction of key points in black ops 2 that were never touched on again a lot of frustration was created when players had no answers about the rift or broken arrow things that came out of nowhere and went nowhere I know creating this storyline is extremely difficult, but the fans get restless when some of the continuity is thrown out. There is a lot of discrepancy in what is canon in this series. Well, this was before Black Ops 3. Any map made by the campaign team is in question, and players want to know what the true maps are. Recently, the community has found a way to connect all the maps in... Wow, really? Recently, the community has found a way to connect all the maps into three different time parallels using 115 time and space displacement as the main explanation. I hope we are on the right track to understanding the maps. I have to laugh looking back at this when we said there was only three timelines. Like, oh my god. It's amazing where we were and where we've come. And we, a lot of it wasn't too far off, but multiverse just, woo. Woo. Crawler bleed out time. Having a crawler in the previous games allowed players to get themselves situated for upcoming rounds. In Black Ops 2, if players left a crawler, it would end the round prematurely. This was not appreciated by the community. Even if the zombie team doesn't want to give players unlimited time to run around, at least grant them a 2-3 to three minute grace period for crawler's life, no matter how far away the player is. That's still a frustration I see to this day. I know you want to have all your secrets and we don't want us figuring out the entire map in one playthrough, but my lord, the crawler times in Black Ops 2 were awful. Black Ops 3 was fine, but Black Ops 2, oh my god, I just want, oh. Oh, dynamic maps. This would consist of events restricting areas or creating new ones on the map. Players were not a fan of the transit fog or the call of the dead fog either. Not being able to see seems to anger players more than anything else. Maps built up from gameplay rather than easter eggs. The community wants great easter eggs but in Black Ops 2 every map was built around the easter egg quest. Players couldn't even start a map without being talked to about it. Many players want a super immersive quest when they choose to do it like the black ops 1 maps origins was a terrible in this respect samantha would talk to players so frequently muting her was the only reprieve we got from her constant bombardment of demands i'm not safe here you have to hurry only the giant finds a space to the sky from the pit oh, you are so very next pack a bunch accessible after players unlock it at all times a major reason Doris is fun for many is the ability to pack a punch at a moment's notice. The community loves this in maps like Ascension and Origins. That was kind of a comment like in Die Rise or Transit. Getting to pack a punch was just awful. And he, Buried was pretty easy in that sense. And Mob of the Dead was a pain in the ass sometimes as well. And that was kind of the push and pull at the time, all those years ago, that we were really complaining about not being able just to pack a punch when we wanted to. They got that right. One of the biggest suggestions, all previous maps included and remastered. Having all the previous maps on the most current game is something almost every zombie fan would gladly pay for. With the new generation of consoles, players believe there's enough room on disc or digital download to accomplish putting all these maps in their game. I'm not sure how feasible this is, but even putting a DLC or microtransaction out to download some of the best maps would go over extremely well. I know it's possible, because Black Ops 3 takes up the most freaking disc room on my PS4. It's over 100 gigabytes of bullshit just for the game on there. I, they could fit the old remastered maps in just fine. 
Custom games. The option was introduced in Black Ops 2, but will only scratch the surface. Players would love almost complete control over features. Features players would like to be able to adjust are the controls of weapons, perks, zombies, special zombies, equipment, and magic in the map. This allows players to play endless ways. Black Ops 2 was a great step in the right direction for this idea. And yet they went nowhere within Black Ops 3, where you could have only shotguns on the map, or only this. Gobblegum's kind of led us down that path. There's so many other ways we could have played that would have made it so much more fun. Big maps with lots of quick transportation. Players love big maps, but hate waiting. The biggest complaint I hear and read are how long it takes to get around big maps. Transit and die rise face this issue more than any other map. Players are stuck waiting for elevators even if they have a key. Transit takes so long to get from area to area. With the fog, denizens, and zombies, the sheer time running in between bus depot and farm is far too long without any other means to get there quicker. The bus could be at farm for all the player knows, which is why the bus wasn't received well. It wasn't fast enough or it wasn't there when players needed it. This is why an item to call the bus would have been so different. If every station had a thing you could buy to call the bus, I can't imagine what a different map transit would have been. <laughs> this, is, this is starred multiple times on here. I, I just gotta, gotta show that one. Old characters return. The single biggest want from the community is the return of our original characters with Samantha. Even if the zombie team does not want to use my suggestions for the storyline, the original characters are a must for the series. The community loves them and there's so much more to their story to tell. Everyone wants to see their quest continue until the climactic end. Picking up after Moon would be the great way to start off a return for the old characters. They wanted to go with their new characters and I think that was a mistake. I think the Origins crew was boring and the character arcs they tried to tell sucked. And I, I know that might be harsh and it might be a really tough criticism to hear from that. And the stereotypes, maybe they couldn't have gone farther with it the arcs, but just like, what changed? What changed in Dempsey from Origins to Revelations, or Nikolai, or Takio, or Richtofen? All they did was kill themselves, find peace, and they got more boring. I just can't believe you made them more boring. Oh boy, I fucking regret this one. This is, this is, this is nonsense. I don't know, I'm gonna take this one out. Harder Easter eggs. Not just for the big quest Easter eggs, but the little things. A lot of the community wants the little notes, bulletin boards, chalkboards, etc. Anything that challenges gamers for a great deal of time is great. Easter eggs that don't show up for weeks later is incredible. The Ascension Easter egg was so amazing that way. Both big and small, the community loves lots of little Easter eggs throughout the map. Boy, I regret that one. <laughs> This was another really good one, a clearer ranking system. I'm a huge fan of the old ranking system because of the fact that the zombie team never told the community how to get the shotgun rank. This seemed to have stopped boosters everywhere. I know players with over 300,000 kills that don't have a shotgun rank. I am grateful for the highest zombie rank being difficult to achieve, although some direction would be appreciated by the community. The community wants to revamp the system with bonuses. The higher your rank, the more little bonuses players have. Nothing game breaking, but an extra starting clip of ammo when a higher rank player spawns. One extra touch from a zombie. Slightly discounted items. Were all things that we suggested to Treyarch that would have been really good to implement into the game. I like the shotgun system, especially before we figured out it was rounds to down, because of that boosting. The boosting was such a problem back in the day, and then it just kind of made the ranking system null and void, where now we have a good ranking system of levels. There's really time you put into the game. And the last thing I have here is, is six pages of stuff they did great, which I really don't think anyone wants me to go through because this video is as long as possible. But there's a lot of really good stuff in there telling Treyarch what they did right and what we want to congratulate them on. We didn't want it to be something like, this is what you should have done with your game. It should have been like, these are the things we didn't like, these are the things we do like, do whatever you want, but here's what people are saying about it. And that was the whole idea. It was just supposed to be a criticism. So if you made it through this video, God bless. I can't imagine what a nightmare this is gonna be to edit, so it's just not a, a guy standing behind perk posters and talking for almost an hour and a half. So I hope you enjoyed. That was the binder I sent to Treyarch. God, there were spelling errors in it. Boy, I would have rewrote this and did it differently. But that's what it was back in the day, and I was a completely different person all those years ago when this was released. A lot of those ideas ended up showing themselves in some form in Black Ops 3. Whether they used it or not, I don't really care. It just it's cool to see these ideas and suggestions. We're on a similar wavelength with what Treyarch was trying to do. I was definitely still with that scientific type of approach to zombies. And at the end of the day, I'm kind of curious what you guys thought of my storyline. Do you think it would have been better received if they went with my ideas rather than the Cthulhu fantasy route? 
I don't know, probably not, but I still think what I, mine was very much like a fan fiction versus what Jason was creating and innovating new zombie content. But that's just my ideas. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast recounting this from the past. If you guys want any more information about zombies and thoughts and commentary, subscribe. I got all kinds of things coming out. Zombie DLC, one for Infinite Warfare is around the corner, all kinds of thought and discussion things coming out, and more stories from other games. Oh, because it's just fun talking about this stuff and the narratives. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.